हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू लेक्चर नंबर थ्री ऑफ चैप्टर नंबर एट अल्टरनेटिव फेयर्स एंड एग्जॉस इमिशन इन प्रीवियस टू लेक्चर्स वे डिस्कस एंड स्टडी द अल्टरनेटिव फेयर्स वेरियस अल्टरनेटिव फेयर्स एंड देयर सुटेबिलिटी फॉर एस आई इंजीन एज वेल एज फॉर सी एन जी ना इन थर्ड लेक्चर वे आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द इंजिन इमिशन सेक्शन in which we are going to discuss the various content of this exhaust emission namely sa engine emission it includes hc emission and co emission and nox hydrocarbon emission carbon monoxide emission oxidizer nitrogen then controlling methods evaporative thermal and catalytic converters sa engine emissions CO, NOx, smog, particulate control methods for CI engine, chemical and EGR, and standard pollution norms. Bharat state. Let us start P with the engine emissions. Six. So as we know that the automobile plays important role in the transport system in all all world, including India. So this rise in civilization is closely related with the improvements in transportations. So in the development of transport. the internal combustion engines both petrol as well as diesel plays important roles getting it occupies the important positions so petrol engine has provided reliable small power units for personalized transport and in this way revolutionizes the live living habits of the people great extent getting so diesel engine has provided power units for transport systems that is buses good transportation systems like trucks so indeed the petrol engine powered automobiles and diesel engine powered buses and trucks are symbols of our modern technological society getting modern technological society these are the symbols petrol engines and diesel engine so in recent times the internal combustion engines powered vehicles have come under heavy attack due to various problems created by them created by them the most serious of these problems is air pollution most problem that due to this vehicle that is air pollution whereas the main whereas the main problem facing the developing countries in pollution they are they are going to face the pollution that is the engine pollution is a uh, important so india however faces the same severe problem of pollutions in metropolitan cities like delhi mumbai kolkata chennai kanpur getting so likewise it going to faces the engine or this pollutions so what is air pollution what is mean by air pollution so air pollution can be defined as an addition to our atmosphere of any material which will have the deleterious effect deleterious effect on life upon our planets so the main pollutants contributes by automobiles are carbon getting that is a carbon monoxides unburned hydrocarbons and oxides of nitrogens and lead and other particulate emissions so again automobiles are not only the source of the air pollutions other sources such as electric power generating stations industrial or domestic fuel consumption refuse burning industrial processing they are also contribute towards the environment that contaminations getting but however the percentage of air pollution from the automobiles is much more than the others getting than the others because nowadays the increasing the that automobile vehicles day by day that is the increasing getting increasing the this number of vehicles in increasing and in this manner there is a multiplication there will be going to be occurs with the automobile it vehicles emissions so we will discuss the this emissions from the vehicles that is from gasoline engine or lpg or diesel because again it is a petroleum hydrocarbon that is a petroleum product and again this petroleum products is contains of the hydrogen and 
carbons getting so in gasoline as well as lpg as well as in diesel can found hydrogen and carbon and that is a main sources for the emissions like hydrocarbons carbon monoxide oxide of nitrogen so various engine design parameters are very important because is directly influence on the emissions so by proper design by proper modification of these engine design parameters one can control the emission getting for example engine cooperation ratio air fuel ratio then fuel rating means octane number of that fuel cetin number of fuel combustion chamber design turbulence swirling motion spark timing advance retard fuel system design means carburetor fuel injection system design getting likewise there are various engine design parameters are there by we control the emissions so this figure will show you the pollutants from gasoline engine this figure shows you the pollution from the gasoline engine so there are four possible sources of automobile pollutions from petrol engine getting four possible sources are there from automobile engine one fuel tank carburetor crankcase and exhaust pipe so the contribution of pollutants by these sources as shown in figure so evaporation loss that is due to the fuel tank and carburetor it is up to 15 to 25 percent of total hydrocarbon emission evaporative loss from fuel tank and carburetor crankcase blow by from crankcase is around 20 to 35 percent of hydrocarbons and tail pipe exhaust exhaust tail pipe exhaust results 50 to 60 percent of hydrocarbons and almost all co and nox think almost all co and nox that will be observed in the tail pipe only but it see will observe in fuel tank carburetor as well as in the crankcase getting so the evaporative losses these are the diet losses diet losses of the raw gasoline from the fuel engine fuel system that is carburetor getting that is a carburetor the blow by gas that is a vapors and gases leaking into the crankcase from combustion chamber and the pollutants from the exhaust pipes are due to the incomplete combustions first so the emission from gasoline evaporative loss so evaporative emissions account for 15 to 25 percent of total hydrocarbon emissions from gasoline engine the two main sources of evaporative emissions are fuel tank and the carburetor fuel tank losses first we will discuss fuel tank losses so fuel tank losses occur occur by displacement of vapor during filling of petrol tank fuel tank losses occur by displacement of vapor during filling of petrol tank or by vaporization of fuel in the tank forcing the vapor through the breather vent to the atmosphere so where the temperature is low getting where the temperature is low fuel tank breathes in air so air will be breathes by the fuel tank so when temperature goes high it breathes out air loaded with petrol vapor when temperature is high air breathes out temperature is low air breathes in so fuel tank losses occur because the tank temperature is increased fuel tank temperature increase during the vehicle operation getting so because of that fuel tank losses occurs with the increasing tank temperature increase during the vehicle operation and which causes an increase in the vapor pressure and thermal expansion of tank vapor getting so when the partially filled fuel tank is open to the atmosphere 
partial pressure of vapor phase hydrocarbons and vapor pressure of the liquid are equal and they are equilibrium getting so when fuel is partially filled and during that the vapor phase of hydrocarbons and vapor pressure of the liquid are equal and they are in equilibrium if temperature of liquid is increased getting due to the engine operation then vapor pressure of liquid will increases getting and therefore to restore the equilibrium what happens to restore the equilibrium an additional liquid vaporizes and the total pressure of the tank increases and since the tank is open to the atmosphere the vapor will flow out of the tank and this will cause the again the loss of the hydrocarbons getting it will cause the emission of the hydrocarbons getting so less the tank fill greater the evaporation loss less the tank fill greater the evaporation loss getting so it will depends upon the tank fill getting if one fourth is there then loss will be more if one half is there loss is less if three fourth is there loss is again less if tank is full with the fuel land then loss is again negligible getting so amount of fuel inside the fuel tank will also be very much important getting so it will decides the how much loss from the hydrocarbons from the fuel tank then carburetor loss carburetor losses results from external venting of the float bowl relieving the internal pressure as carburetor heats and second hot soak losses which occur after the engine has been stopped as a result of evaporation of petrol stored in the bowl loss being through the vent pipe or through the air cleaner so most of the loss from the carburetor occurs due to direct boiling of the fuel in the carburetor bowl during hot soak getting during the hot soak then crankcase blow by so the blow by is the phenomena of leakage it is a phenomena of leakage past the piston behind the piston under the piston and piston rings from the engine cylinder to the crankcase so the blow by hydrocarbon emissions are amount around 20 to 35 percent of total hc emissions from the engine getting so the mechanism of this leakage past the piston getting the mechanism of this leakage past the piston is due to the worn out of the piston rings if piston rings are worn out what happens they are going to be goes into the crankcase where fuel mixture is goes into the crankcase or if air fuel mixture is trapped in the top gland of the piston in top land clearance of the piston and behind the top ring then what happens due to the quenching effect it will not take part in the combustion and it will goes into the crankcase and thereby it causes the crankcase blow by getting thereby it causes the crankcase blow by next exhaust tail pipe emissions so tail pipe exhaust emissions are the major source of automotive emissions that is 50 to 60 percent of hc and almost all co and hc getting so the tail pipe exhaust emissions are the major source of automobile emissions major source of automobile emissions so here one by one we'll discuss first we'll discuss the hydrocarbons we will discuss the hydrocarbons so hydrocarbons are produced because of incomplete fuel combustion or fuel vaporization meaning it will be due to the incomplete fuel combustion or fuel evaporation it is closely related to many design and operating variables it is related with the engine design variables as well as operating variables engine design variables are induction system design or combustion chamber design getting operating variables are air fuel ratio speed load getting air fuel ratio speed load these are the operating variables maintenance is also factor important factor due to the uh, for the hydrocarbon emission getting so induction system determines air fuel ratio of the engine 
maintenance will include piston rings wear lubrication proper lubrication proper cooling deposits which are likely to affect the air fuel ratio supplied to the engine cylinder design of combustion chamber also is very important in that combustion por portions which come in contact with the chamber walls quenched and don't burn some of this quenched the fuel mixture forced the during the exhaust stroke and because of the high local concentration of hydrocarbons in the mixture contributes to high hc exhaust from the engine so also this quench area opposes spreading of flame causes hc emissions getting so these there are different reasons are there which will cause the incomplete combustions and because of this incomplete combustion it will results in hydrocarbon emissions so to avoid this lower compression ratio surface to volume ratio lower high stroke to bore ratio is desirable hydrocarbon emissions is considered a hazardous form of air pollution because of it will results in eye irritation throat irritation lung irritation is forced out of the chamber during the exhaust and possibly develop cancer high car high hydrocarbon emissions are result of cylinder misfire improper ignition timing worn cylinder rings getting that will results in high hydrocarbon emissions so maintenance is also very important co emission next it is a co emission so carbon monoxide occurs only in engine exhaust so it is a product of incomplete combustion due to insufficient amount of air in the air fuel mixture or insufficient time in the cycle for completion of combustion so theoretically gasoline engine exhaust can be made free of co by operating it at air fuel ratio greater than 16s to 1 means at lean air fuel mixtures getting so co is always present in exhaust even at lean mixtures getting but percentage is a less getting so to avoid the co emission lean mixture is to be used so the percentage of co increases at ideal range getting percentage of co increases when engine is idling and it will reach minimum during acceleration and during normal cruising speed during acceleration and normal cruising speed getting so co is again extremely toxic colorless odorless it is a colorless odorless and toxic co is rapidly absorbed by lungs and combines with hemoglobin in the blood forming carboxy hemoglobin prevents blood cells from carrying oxygen to the body tissues adverse effect on brain nervous system as these have higher oxygen demand high carbon monoxide emissions can be caused by restricted or dirty air cleaner advance ignition timing close the fuel injectors this causes the high co emissions then nox emission next is the nox emissions so the factors which increases nox will tend to improve the fuel mileage and lower hc and co emissions getting so the factors which are favorable for nox that will be results to lower hc and co emission as well as fuel economy this means that to increase the fuel economy and lower hc and co production of nox will be increase getting And for this reason emission controls have been added to lower all form of emissions so here if you see the figure the rich mixture hc increases hydrocarbon emission increases for rich mixture for nox reduces when mixture is lean hc and co decreases nox increases getting so in this manner factors favorable to decrease the hcco it is unfavorable for oxides of nitrogen or vice versa so oxides of nitrogen which also occur only in engine getting it also 
occurs in engine exhaust. <coughs> so, oxides of nitrogen which also occur only in engine exhaust, they are again combination of nitro oxide NO and nitrogen oxide NO2. So, nitrogen oxygen react at a relatively high temperature. So, NX is formed at high temperature, relatively high temperature. Therefore, high temperature and availability of oxygen are the two main reasons for the formation of NX. Getting if temperature is high and if the available oxygen is more or sufficient, then NOx emission will be occur inside the engine or you can observe at the exhaust. Getting so when proper amount of oxygen is available at higher peak combustion temperature the more is the NOx formation. Getting. So, the NOx is formed in the atmosphere as NO oxidizes. Getting. So, inside the engine cylinder it is a NO. So, when it is in a atmosphere it oxidizes because the oxides of nitrogen. Getting. So, the combination of HC and NOx in the presence of sunlight at certain atmospheric conditions produces photochemical smog. It produces the photochemical smog. Getting. So, again NOx is high and respiratory irritant. It has irritating odor, mismen, low solubility, reaches deep in lungs causing irritation, may produce mild irritation in upper respiratory tract. Asthmatic person may cause asthmatic attacks getting so high compression ratio lean air fuel mixture hotter running engine produces more nox than the earlier engine getting than the earlier engine so this is nox emissions now let's discuss the ci emissions so as we know that in si engine the combustion occur that is a homogeneous combustion is a homogeneous whereas in diesel combustion is a heterogeneous combustion that will be occur that is a heterogeneous and because the diesel fuel is injected into cylinder filled with high temperature compressed air emissions formed as a result of burning this heterogeneous air fuel mixture depend on prevailing conditions not only during the combustion but also during the expansion especially prior to the exhaust wall opening so the mixture preparation during the delay period fuel ignition quality residence time getting residence times at different combustion temperature expansion duration general engine design features play very important role in emission formation for CIG getting in emission formation of CNG getting so emission from diesel engines again classified in the same categories as those from the gasoline engines but the level of emissions in these categories vary considerably getting level of this emission will be considerably it is a changes compared to the gasoline engine getting so a sample of diesel exhaust may be free from smoke, odor and have no hydrocarbons or it may be heavily smoke laden, highly odors can be high high heavy concentration of unburned hydrocarbons. Getting so the emissions again the same categories, but the will be more in case of C engine. Getting so again it will having the CO emission, HC emission and with the NOx emissions and the again the same reasons is again applicable for the this hydrocarbon as well as for CO as well as for the oxides of nitrogen meaning then along with this HC, CO and NOx it again causes the exhaust smoke so again the smoke which is defined as a visible product of combustion due to the poor combustion 
getting again the originates from the combustion only due to the rich fuel air mixture due to the rich fuel air mixture or lean air fuel mixture getting so so it will be again in the form of soot if soot found sufficient oxygen it will burn completely if it not burn in combustion cycle it will pass in the exhaust and if in sufficient quantity will be visible again it is visible for the our eyes getting so again the smoke will be of two types blue white smoke and black smoke getting so blue white smoke is caused by liquid droplets of lubricating oil or fuel oil while starting from cold due to lower surrounding temperature and intermediate products of combustion don't burn so this results in bluish or white smoke when exhausted also when lubricating oil flows past rings the results in blue white smoke blue white smoke other than cold starting indicates that piston rings are worn out and maintenance is required whereas black smoke black smoke is carbon particle suspended in the exhaust gas it largely depends upon the air fuel ratio increases rapidly as load increase and the available air is less or depleted getting so again causes of smoke are various causes are there namely injection system fuel rating maintenance type of fuel load getting engine type speed the fuel ratio various these factors are again responsible to generate to create to produce the exhaust smoke getting so one can control the smoke by proper maintenance by proper additives by proper exhaust system one can reduce the smoke one can control the smoke getting so now we'll discuss the soot and particulate matter so as excessive use of fossil fuels is going to lead the global environment degradation effects such as greenhouse effect acid rain ozone depletion climate change because of this excessive use of this fossil fuel means petroleum fuels which now results in greenhouse effect acid rain ozone depletion climate change. soot formation and particulate matter has traditionally been associated with diesel engines meaning since the introduction of diode injection gasoline engines also suffer from this problem it is not with the conventional gas engines but diode injection gas engines the problem of soot or particulate matter also arises so upcoming emission standards will be introducing more stringent particulate matter regulations for gasoline engines so again soot is not clearly defined substance but in general terms soot is solid substance consisting roughly eight parts of carbon and have the highest hydrogen content with a carbon to hydrogen ratio as low as 1 but as soot matures hydrogen fraction decreases soot is formed from unburned fuel which nucleates from vapor phase to solid phase in the fuel rich regions of carbon chamber at elevated temperature getting so soot is so particulate is combination of soot and other liquid or solid phase materials that are collected when exhaust gases pass through the filter particulate is often separated into soluble or dry fraction so the fraction of soot in particulate from diesel exhaust varies but is typically higher than 50% other particulate matter constituents include impartially burned fuel lubricating oil bound water wear metals fuel derived sulfate so again the main constituent